And it doesn't mean telling a two-year-old what sexual intercourse is. Balls. Copper balls. <laughs> oh, that's porn. I don't think I can show that on YouTube. Hey everyone, I'm Hannah and welcome back to The Pleasure Trove. The monthly-ish series where we discuss all things going on in the world, the news, also arts and culture and events and good things to do with sex. Sex, 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 sex. Sexy favourites, basically. Ding! I, did, I just did my own dink instead of it being added in. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for the lovely response to the first episode of this series. I kind of feel like I should have a different set when it's like, welcome to the pleasure trove. I feel like I should have a set, but we're just here. We're, we're still in my office. But I have a lot of exciting things to share with you today, so let's just dive in, shall we? Dive right in. So first off, some news bits. Newsy news, news news. A new treatment for bacterial vaginosis, or BV, is being studied, which will be a vaginal fluid transplant. So it basically takes the healthy vaginal fluid of the donor and puts that inside the vaginal canal of the person who has bacterial vaginosis and some magic medical science happens and maybe it gets rid of their BV. The reason why this interested me is because, and not sex related, with my ulcerative colitis, I've been hearing about potential new treatment in terms of a fecal transplant. Now I don't know if that's for just ulcerative colitis or just for Crohn's or IBD in general. I do not qualify for the fecal transplant anymore because I have had surgery. But that's another thing that is like being studied and being tested where you take poo from a healthy donor and put it in the digestive tract of the unhealthy person and medical science miracles happen. So pretty cool to see that we potentially have fecal transplants and now vaginal fluid transplants. Oh boy. It's an exciting time. The Independent recently ran a piece with parenting experts talking about sex education and how you should be having these mini conversations from like the age of two. And it was so refreshing to see this and it coming from experts and just explaining like why this is the best way forwards when it comes to educating young people about sex, about their bodies, about relationships. And it doesn't mean telling a two-year-old what sexual intercourse is, but teaching them the correct terminology for body parts and things like that. And just like having these mini conversations as children grow up rather than it being like the talk and it being this one time event. One of the things that was said in the article, which is like a light bulb moment for me, which I just loved was if a child asks you a question about sex, about bodies or whatever it is, you should ask them back tell me what you mean by that. And I was like, oh my God, of course, because children might just be asking something because they heard something somewhere or they might already have ideas about what it is that they're asking about or they might be confused about the language that they're using. So if you ask them first what they mean by that, then you'll get a bit more clarity of like where they're already at with their understanding of what they're asking you. And oh, I was like, of course. Of course. So that was a great read. This next thing is wild to me, not just because it exists, but also like, how did I not know about this? Because some of these news articles are from like 2018 and I was just oblivious. I'm ashamed of myself, ashamed. And I literally just found out about this this morning before filming <laughs> this video, which is that there might be a new IUD in town. In fact, there is a new IUD in town, just not on the NHS yet. And it's not an IUD, it's an IUB, they're calling it, because the brand name is Ballerine? Ballerine! Because it's balls. Copper balls. <laughs> so, it, <laughs> Jesus Christ. When I hear Ballerine, I think of that bar club in Shoreditch that has a ball pit called like Bally Ballerson. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, Bally Ballerson Ballerine. <laughs> it basically works the same as the copper coil, except it lasts five years instead of 10 years. So it's a non-hormonal contraceptive device and it's not a T-shaped like the coil is. It's lots of little copper balls that are 
on a string, it's hard to tell. But it's meant to be smaller than the T-shaped coils, so I think a lot of people might go for this device. It has come to the UK, but I believe at the moment only private doctors are offering it as a contraceptive to um, insert because you have to have a professional insert it for you, but it might be on the NHS soon. So keep your eyes peeled if you're in the market for some new contraceptive. It's very exciting when new stuff comes out, although like, please can something for people with penises and testes, please get on the market, like about now. No, about 10 years ago, actually, thanks. In our arts and culture category, which is what I'm calling it, this is arts and culture, got some very exciting news. The Vagina Museum is opening. Vagina is opening, but the Vagina Museum is also opening. I am so proud of Florence and her team for getting this off the ground. It's been two years of a schlog of constant hard work and they have a premises in Camden Market. The museum is opening with its first exhibition, Muff Busters, I believe it's called, which is myth busting lots of vulva and vagina information. And that is opening on the 16th of November, but for the majority of October and into November, they have loads of events. So check out their website. There is lots of cool stuff that they have going on. And I for one will absolutely be going to the Vagina Museum when it opens. I cannot wait. And it's so exciting that it's in London. I also have some sex books that I want to share with you. But before we get onto these, I listened to The Testaments by Margaret Atwood, which is the sequel Sequel? Prequel? Which is the one that comes after? Sequel. Which is the sequel <laughs> to The Handmaid's Tale. I don't want to give away any spoilers, don't worry, but I really enjoyed it. It was a bit more plotty, a bit more action-packed than The Handmaid's Tale, which you're just like in Offred's head and it's just like a stream of consciousness, but there was a lot going on. It's narrated by three different characters and one of them is Aunt Lydia. That's all I'll say. Now these books I haven't read and I was gifted them all, but I wanted to share because that's kind of like what this series is about. I get sent a lot of like sex related stuff and I wanna share them with you. I want you to like know about these things um, and I'm very, very excited to read these. So first there is Behind Closed Doors, Sex Education Transformed by Natalie Fiennes? Fiennes, Fiennes so sorry. On the back it says, if Me Too has taught us anything, it's how dangerous it is to keep conversations about sex hidden from view. Behind Closed Doors invests in a radical, inclusive and honest sex education, taking us beyond learning about the birds and the bees to identifying inequality that stands in the way of sexual freedom. Very excited to read this. How to Have Feminist Sex, A Fairly Graphic Guide by Flo Perry. This is an illustrated guide um, to how to have feminist sex and I am so excited. Look how cool these illustrations are. I wanna know how to have feminist sex. No one ever taught me that. That would be great. I love a good feminist, like graphic illustrated book, big fan. And this monster, oh my God, it is so big, but I am so excited to read this, is A Curious History of Sex by Kate Lister. So I actually pledged um, to support the publication of this book on Unbound, like two years ago or something, and it's coming out in February next year. Um, but then they reached out to me asking if I would like a gifted copy. And so I have this, and then also I've pledged for it as well. So I'll be end up getting two. Maybe I'll give, do a little, little giveaway, but this is a proof copy and it's the history of sex. I did a history degree and I specialized in sexual history. So this is, oh my God, right up my street. And Kate Lister is a historian and specializes in sexual history and oh, follow her Whores of Your account if you are also into sex history stuff, like would recommend. Oh my God, there's diagrams and pictures. <laughs> yes, yes, historical. Oh, that's porn. I don't think I can show that on YouTube. <laughs> Amazing. So yeah, this book comes out in February, 2020, but you can pre-order it on Amazon and also still pledge for it on Unbound, I believe. So. Oh my God, congrats, Kate, you did it, you did it. Ooh, 6th of February, it says, 6th of February, it comes out. Just in time for Valentine's Day. What a great Valentine's Day present, imagine. <laughs> and then also in arts and culture, but also news, because this is newsworthy in my world, Sex Education, Wrapped Filming, season two, the Netflix show. Oh my God, I don't know when it's gonna be released, but they've finished filming. So everyone, keep your eyes and ears 
peeled. Imagine if they've announced when it's coming back in between me filming this and it going live. That would be embarrassing. But I'm so excited. I love that show so much. If you haven't watched season one yet, now is your chance. Just binge it, catch up, please do yourself a favor. In events, I want to give a shout out to Iman Festival, who are currently crowdfunding to put on a Muslim LGBTQ plus festival. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can go support it. They've reached their first goal of £5,000 and now they have a stretch goal of £10,000. So if you can support, please do. Um, I just wanted to give um, a shout out to that. They say they're planning on putting the festival on in spring 2020. So watch out for that. If you're Muslim, if you're queer, if you're an ally, check it out. Link in the description. And finally, I want to share with you one of my favourite websites because they recently launched season Two. Now it's not a TV show, no, it's OMG Yes, which is a resource, a database, a study of how women and people with vulvas masturbate. So season one was all external and you have to be over 18 to sign up and you basically get interviews with loads of different people talking about how they masturbate, how they touch themselves, the techniques that they use and visually videos of them showing you how they do it. And season two is internal. So now we're getting the information about the vagina and how people might stimulate themselves internally. And I am on board. I'm so ready. I actually reached out to OMGS when I heard that they were launching season two to see if they had an affiliate program and they do. So if you click my link in the description and you sign up, it just means that I get a little bit of a kickback from any signups through my link. They have a little trailer video as well. If you wanna give that a watch, oh, I am very excited. When season one came out, I remember like playing around with it and like watching all of these videos of all these different people talking about how they touch themselves and like the different techniques and it has like the different categories of, of different techniques and kind of like teaches you like how to do them. And then there's like a diagram of a vulva and you can use your mouse on your computer to like touch it. And then it's the person's voice just being like, Oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's very strange, but it's because they just do a video being like, this is how I like to be touched. And then it's like, okay, practice. I mean, whatever you're into, but would recommend. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Pleasure Trove. Do give it a thumbs up if you liked it and let me know in the comments some of the things that you think I should check out, any newsworthy stuff, arts, culture, events, stuff that is going on that you think that we should all be shouting and screaming about in the world of sex. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Very nice.